Introduction to Cocos 2D. Welcome to Cocos 2D Tutorials. Brought to you by Bob Yu. For more information, go to bobhewland.com slash cocos 2D. What is Cocos 2D? First, let me say that there are two versions of Cocos 2D. One written in Python and one written in Objective-C, targeting iOS. When we talk about Cocos 2D here, we are only referring to the one written in Objective-C, targeting iOS. Cocos 2D is a framework that is a library of objects and methods for making games. As you know, games require fast graphics. The best way to understand Cocos 2D is to look at the history of games and computer graphics. Here is an illustration of your application and its environment. Your application can use the CPU and the memory. When it wants to make some graphics, it sends a draw instruction to the CPU. There is a problem when your application is a game. It is too slow. To solve this problem, graphics cards were introduced. Instead of sending draw instructions to the CPU, you could now send the draw instructions to the graphics card. The graphics card has its own memory and processing unit. There was a problem here. There were no standard draw instructions. Each graphics card manufacturer had its own drawing instructions. To solve that problem, Silicon Graphics introduced OpenGL. OpenGL stands for Open Graphics Library and consists of library of several hundred standardized low-level functions. Now each manufacturer had to obey OpenGL and your application had to call the low-level functions of OpenGL. The benefit was that your application worked on all graphics cards. This was a real revolution for game programmers, who now could write games with fast and beautiful graphics. The next problem came when mobile phones like iPhone were introduced. They were not as powerful as computers, so something called OpenGLES was introduced. ES stands for Embedded Systems, and OpenGLES is a subset of OpenGL. For many programmers, there was a problem. The functions in OpenGL were too low level. It was difficult to learn the OpenGL API, and your application were very complex. In order to solve that, an in-between library was introduced. Many such in-between libraries exist, but for iOS programmers, Cocos 2D is of special importance. It is an object-oriented library consisting of clauses written in Objective-C, the native language of iOS programmers. From your point of view, you interact with Cocos 2D by sending Objective-C messages to the Cocos 2D high-level objects. What kind of high-level objects are there? Here are some basic ones. The director is an object that shuffles different scenes in and out. There is only one director in an application. Director is also responsible for setting up things like pixel format, device orientation, etc. Another object is a scene. An application can contain several scenes, but only one scene is active at a time. A scene consists of several layers. A layer is normally the entire drawable screen area. 
A layer often holds a number of sprites and other elements. Layers are usually responsible for user interactions. Layers are where most of a programmer's time will be spent. A sprite is a 2D image which can be moved, rotated, scaled, etc. Sprites, layers and scenes are nodes. In other words, a node is a superclass of a sprite, layer and scene. These five objects are the most important ones in Cocos 2D, but there are many others. Here you see a list of objects in Cocos 2D. I have marked the five ones that we have been talking about. In order to learn Cocos 2D, you have to learn some of the objects in this list and the methods they contain. Thank you for watching.